Hello everyone, this is John Dodge. I'm Community Manager of the Enterprise CIO Forum. Today, my guest is Bob Gorley. He is Chief Technology Officer of CTOVision.com and former CEO of the Defense Intelligence Agency. Hi, Bob. Hello, John. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, last time we did this was during Hurricane Sandy, and it wasn't an overwhelming success, but it's uh, nice weather here today, and I hope it is uh, what you are. I'm in Boston. You're in Virginia. Um, so let's give this a shot. Uh, Bob, I want to talk about shadow IT. Is shadow IT bad, inherently bad? So I guess it depends on um, how we're using that term shadow IT. I hear CTOs and CIOs use that two different ways. Um, one way is it's the embedded IT in other parts of the enterprise that the CIO doesn't really know about. So mission-focused people are taking their money and investing it and creating their own IT. Other people use the word shadow IT to mean um, closer to the bring your own device. So it's even more... Uh, you know, individuals bringing their IT, even bringing their own Wi-Fi into work to create their own environment. Uh, both of those are kind of, you know, if, if done wrong, can be outside the scope of the CIO and can be bad. Both of them, if done right, you know, could be something pretty good. Uh, can a CEO or a CIO just decree no shadow IT and have everybody uh, do the best job they can? Uh, or is it, uh, has that ship sailed? You know, um, that's a very good question. I came from an environment, Defense Intelligence Agency, where I was once the chief technology officer, and I could watch um, military orders being given from uh, three-star admirals and generals, um, things that um, you would expect to be followed. We're a military organization. Even there, human nature kicks in, and people do things to get the job done. So sometimes it's not so easy as giving a direct order or making sure your policy is right you got to give orders, you got to get the policy right, but if you don't give people the tools they need to get their job done, they're going to uh, do whatever it takes, generally. Uh, how critical is that policy, and how do you enforce that policy, and is enforce the right word in this day of newfound uh, end-user freedom when it comes to devices? Yeah, so I think there's uh, two things to keep in mind. One is you got to have policy, and you need to enforce it. You know, That's what enterprises need to do. But you have to give people options to get their job done. So it's got to be smart, informed policy, and you need to give them the tools to get their work done. Um, let me mention an example. Um, there was a, uh, an article in Foreign Affairs by the Deputy Secretary of Defense who talked about a penetration of U.S. networks. He called it buckshot. Mm -hmm. The reason there was a penetration was uh, people overseas, military guys mostly, were taking um, USB drives, thumb drives, and moving information between unclassified networks and classified networks. That's a violation of policy. Um, so you would think, why are these guys violating policy? Well, some of them didn't know about it. Others had to do it to get their job done. They're being told to get their job done. That's the only tool they had. So you can't blame them. Um, you need to blame the institution, the organization, to you know, fix that and make it right. Well, the same analogies here with shadow IT. Say you have a, an organization in your enterprise that has built an application required to get their job done, and if the CIO has never heard of it, he discovers it and says, you know, this has got security vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. it's, it's wasteful, I can't support the trainee, um, you got to kill that thing. That can be counterproductive to the mission. So there needs to be some balance there. Uh, we found that frequently where that shadow IT is occurring is generating tremendous innovation that you might want to replicate throughout the organization. What would be your advice to a CIO who discovers that uh, application or that, for lack of a better term, a rogue cloud? Do they try to bring it into the organization? Do they try to uh, own it or do they try to secure it? What do they do when they discover a vital app but it's sort of outside the purview of IT? Mm -hmm. So I think that always needs to be a discussion and you need to look at everything. Sometimes the right thing is um, kill it. Take all the money, um, all that. I mean, that may be the right thing. Other times, the right thing is uh, you just tell these folks, keep going. Go faster and faster. Mm -hmm. Make, um, but please follow my integration guidelines so you can use my enterprise directory. Please PKI enable your application and make sure we have auditing around it and give them that other enterprise guidance. 
um, and then do that in a way that's scalable and replicatable. So I guess you need to take those things with a case-by-case um, look. Well, yeah, exactly, and it seems like shadow IT will be with us for years to come, and it's just not a black-and-white uh, issue. Bob Gorley, thank you very much for being with us today. I'm John Dodge, Community Manager of the Enterprise CIO Forum. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again.